Well, hello there, friends. Today we're going to do something a little technical, but not that difficult. I'm going to show you how to butcher correctly a beef tenderloin. I decided to do a video on that because I've seen too many bad ones out there, okay? I'm going to show you how to do this. This is really a simple thing to do, friends. And, uh, but I want everybody to understand how to use the whole thing. You know, I see people on the internet, they go, they take the center cut, which is the Chateau Briand, and they go, oh, this is beautiful filet mignon, put this over there, and put this over there, put it in stew or something. No, 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 no. We're going to use the whole thing. I'm going to show you how to do it correctly, okay? When you buy a tenderloin, friends, you have two choices. You can buy it clean, with no fat on it, or most of the time you're going to buy it, it's going to have a chain on it, it's going to have a silver skin, it's going to have a lot of fat on it. First thing you want to do, look at the date. Look at the date it is packed. This was packed yesterday. Usually between the pack date and the sell date, there's like a week to 10 days. So look at the date. Make sure it's firm. And this is going to be, see this, the head, the head is a much bigger piece and this is going to go down to the tail. Try to buy one where the tail is not so thin. This is this kind of thin one. But I'm going to show you what to do when that happens so we don't waste it, okay? I will show you. So f make sure you do that. Firm, look at the date. Buy prime if you can afford it, otherwise buy a good choice. This is the tenderloin you can buy at Costco. Comes two way, clean or not clean. I have it not so clean, so I can show you how to do it, okay? Very simple. First thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna cut the, the cry vac out, that's a plastic thing, and, uh, and I keep it like that, and then we're gonna take the piece of meat out. Pretty simple, not, not, nothing complicated so far. I have a cutting board with a channel just in case we have some extra blood. We're gonna take it and put them right here. And uh, I'm gonna use some paper towel. First thing I wanna do, friends, I wanna fairly clean it up just a little bit. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this is something where I've seen too many people massacre those, so I wanna really show you. This is an expensive piece of meat. I'm telling you, 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 go, you probably know, you've bought it before, and it's quite expensive, and so we don't want to mess it up. We want to get as much as we possibly can without wasting too much thing. Now, this show, this show, this, uh, this segment today, this uh, video is just about cleaning the tenderloin. We're going to make more videos, show you how to cook, but right now, this is just to clean it, because you got to get there, right? All right, so now what do we do? We got a lot of fat in here. Don't be afraid to use your hand. A lot of people are afraid to use your hand. We want to kind of remove the membrane a little bit. And don't be afraid to remove, to remove as much as you can with your hand first. Yeah, there's not much to grab right here. So now we're going to grab the knife. Now, if you notice, there's a head right there. This is the head. Of, this is called the head of the tenderloin. It's called the tail of the tenderloin. So in order for us to be removing the silver skin, we got to remove the membrane. And we're going to use our hand. And we're going to get in, and we're going to open it up. I'm going to show you. It's pretty simple, okay? It's not difficult at all. The idea is to be able to see. Right now, we can't see anything. So we have to remove this membrane so we can see what we're doing. All right? So look, remove the membrane. You, you just lift it up, you see? And try not to use the knife too much. Not yet. Not yet. You're not ready for the knife yet. You see, look. You just want to remove this membrane. Because if you try to use your knife now, you're gonna cut into this very expensive piece of meat. And we don't wanna do that. So now look, see what I'm doing? I'm remove, I remove the whole membrane, and now I'm kinda of using my finger, and you see? You can do a lot of uh, cleaning first before you use your knife with your fingers, you see? So now you get to a point where I gotta cut. This is what we call the chain, okay? And the chain, you can waste a lot of time cleaning it, but I promise you, this is not very good. The only thing you can do with this is grinded, double grind, and triple grind, and maybe you can make, um, or, or you can use it for stock. I use it for stock, but you can grind it. There's a lot, lot of sinew and nerves that are going all the way through, so it's not easy to clean. People tell you, can clean it up to make a, a shish kebab with it. It's full of nerves and, and, and sinew and all good. So look, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this right now, just to get it out of the way, all right? So now we're gonna go in and we're gonna, Clean up the head a little bit, okay? So look, see what, I turn it the other way, and look, see this is what we call the silver skin. We gotta remove all this. And we gotta remove this without removing any meat. So what I do is I take my knife, and I keep it against the silver skin, you see? See the way I'm doing it, friends? Uh, we, we have a few cameras, so I hope we can capture everything. But it's not exactly, see what I'm doing? My knife is tilted against the silver skin, so I can 
expose it. In order to remove it, I need to expose it. If I don't expose it, how am I going to be able to remove it? And you see? So I'm opening the whole thing up. Very simple. I'm telling you, it's not complicated. And now we're going to remove this. So let's clean this up a little bit. The extra fat we're going to put here. I'm going to show you how to remove that silver skin. When you see it, you're going to go, wow, that's pretty simple to do. Eh? So a uh, boning knife, by the way, very important. You can't do that with a chef's knife, friend. If you don't have a boning knife, I highly recommend you invest in one of them. It saves you a lot of money to do it, and it's so much easier to do. Boning knife is a must. So look, silver skin. You grab it right here on the front. You grab it right there on the front. And then take your knife and slightly tilt it on that silver skin. You see, look, slightly tilt it. And, and let, me, let me make sure I go a little further so you, you'll see it more. You'll understand what it is that I'm doing. You see how I'm scraping the silver skin? If I go too hard, I'll cut it. So I don't want to cut it, right? I just want to slightly scrape it. You see? Then we have no meat on the other side. You see, look, pretty simple, eh? You see, you take it, so, but you keep it folded. Don't, don't put it out there, otherwise it'll, it'll dig into the meat. So you keep it folded, even as you remove it. You can look at it if you want to make sure you're doing an okay job. But you see right there? So now we removed all of that silver skin, and that's good for nothing. I use it for stock, but that's all it's good for. All right? So the silver skin, it's got, if it's got a little flavor in it, we're going to continue removing it. You see? So if you're doing a tenderloin at home... You'll follow the video, and you'll do it exactly as I do it, and I promise you, you're going to get some beautiful results. You see? All right? So, so far, we're doing so good. Okay, so now let's continue removing that silver skin, friends. Let's continue. You see? Same, same deal. When I was in restaurant business, I would do this three, four hours a day, uh, cleaning the meat. That was my first job, actually, when I was a kid at 12 years old. I used to work in a butcher shop. Monsieur Henri, <laughs> we used to make uh, sausage and all that. I'll tell you, I don't know if I ever told you the story, but um, <laughs> the ladies of uh, the, fan, uh, the uh, 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 um, fancy ladies of the neighborhood would go, Monsieur Henri, what's on the sausage today? <laughs> We're a bunch of kids working downstairs. We're going, what they should ask is, what's not in the sausage today? <laughs> I'll tell you everything will go in there. Anyway, let me continue. So now we got to clean up the head a little bit. See, it's much, much better. We got a little fat in here. Now, fat, I'm not too worried about it. We can remove a little bit of it, just a little bit. Okay? So now, let's go back to the other side. Okay? Let's go back to the other side. And as you can see right here, we have a lot of fat. We don't need all that fat right there. We don't need all that fat right here in that head. So we're going to clean it up. Okay? I'll show you. You watch. Come with me. There you go. Here's your watch. Here's your watch. Here's your watch. We're going to clean everything so we can use everything. The idea is to try to have the least possible amount of waste. Because that stuff is expensive. You see, look. Removing it. See? All right there. So now, we have still a little bit of fat right there. And then we're going to flip it on the other side and we're going to clean the other side. And then I'm going to show you how to tie it correctly. How to prepare a beautiful roast. Okay? Now, of course, it's easier to remove it all. I see that so many people doing it. I said, oh, cut all that stuff up. I don't want to cut it up. It's good stuff. And it's good meat, and it's, it's too expensive to throw it all away. All right, so now we can leave this side like that. I mean, we can clean it up a little bit more if we want, but we're good. All right? So remember, clean up your cutting board every time. That's why I got those balls right here. What do we do with this right here? Very simple, friends. All we got to do at this point is take your knife, keep it flat, and you see, and scrape the fat off. Keep it flat, otherwise you're going to dig into the meat. This is the part that's got a lot of fat in it, but just don't worry about it. You're going to show, well, I'm going to show you. When I cook the roast of it, you're going to be amazed how beautiful it looks. And see, all that fat right there is going to melt. We're not throwing it away. So when you see people telling you, take the tail off, which is what I'm cleaning right now, and, uh, and uh, uh, throw it away or make hamburger meat with it or make stew with it. This is not good stew meat, friends. This does not cook good at stew. Stew, you're better off buying $5 a pound or $6 or $8 a pound. Now, but these days it's expensive. Uh, chuck roast, okay? But you do not use filet mignon for, uh, for stews, okay? So you notice my knife is flat, right? Because that fat right there is just on the outside, so it's not difficult to clean, you see? Keep the knife flat. Okay, 
So here we got it. So far, we're looking, we're looking good. See, it's a shame of all that stuff. But this would be, this would be good in a hamburger. Yes, the fat right there would be good for a hamburger. All right, so look, we're going to do the same thing. Remember the silver skin, right? We grab it in the front. We fold the knife. See? We fold the knife and we'll remove it. A silver skin, I don't care how good your teeth are. That's never going to be tender. All right? So let's clean it up. We are looking good. Okay, up oh, a little more at the end. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it uh, after the video is finished today. I, okay, I can't do it now. But I'm going to weigh this, right? I'm going to weigh this, and, uh, and then I'm going to calculate it so you'll have it. I will put that information in the end of the video, you know, show more. When you read it, it'll tell you. Uh, uh, because if you buy it, okay, like this guy right there was a uh, 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 $19 a pound. Cleaned, it was $28 a pound. An extra $9 a pound to clean them. So we're gonna I'm going to make the calculation for you so you'll know. Is it better to waste my time doing this? What it took, 10 minutes? It probably took a little bit longer. Or do I, uh, do I buy it already clean? And we'll do the calculation You'd be amazed. You don't save that much money, but sometimes you may not be able to buy it already clean, so you have to buy it with a fat on. All right, so now what do we do, friends? Okay, well, most, what most people do at this point, friends, they take this right there, and they dispose of all this. It's way too expensive. So what I'm going to show you how to do is to make two beautiful, beautiful, perfect rolls, okay? First thing we're going to do is, you see right here where the head stops? We're going to take the heads, and we're going to cut it right there. Right there is going to give us a beautiful roast. Gorgeous. Okay, you're going to say, how is that going to cook? <laughs> Beautiful. So now, you see a lot of people do what, what they do, friends, here. They take it, they go like this, and they fold it like this, right? Whenever you see somebody do that, change channel. <laughs> Not going to be good because all this is going to be against the grain. It's going to be dry. It's going to be overcooked. No good. What we're going to do, we're going to take this. Pay attention, it's really cool, okay? Now, we could, of course, make this Chateaubriand right here and make it a smaller roast in here. You can do that as well. And I'll show you. We'll do it. We'll do it real quick. Okay, we make a Chateaubriand right here. Chateaubriand, that's uh, uh, for two or for two people. Two. One, two. Here you go. All right, this is the Chateaubriand. Beautiful Chateaubriand. You don't need to do anything to this. Now, what do we do with this? Well, here's what we're going to do with it. We're going to make another beautiful roast. So what we're going to do, we're going to cal calculate it. We're going to fold it. We're going to take, I, 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 I'm trying to figure out how to explain it to you. I want this side, right now you see, it's like this. I want this side to be the same thickness as this side. How do I get there? I cut it right there, and I take it, and I do this. And you're going to say, well, how is that going to cook? You're never even going to know those two pieces were together. The secret is to tie them correctly. Let's go to the next step. We don't need to tie this guy. We're going to need to tie this guy. So I'm going to show you. All right? What do we do next? Very simple, friends. Butcher twine them. And make sure you don't do like a friend of mine. <laughs> he went to Home Depot to get a butcher twine. <laughs> he said it looked the same. Yeah, it looked the same. It was um, uh, nylon. No good, friends. Butcher twine. You take it right there. You take it a long piece. I'm sorry. You take it a short piece right there. <laughs> you take it a short piece. You put it in front of you. Okay, it's very simple, okay? I see so many people, they wrap it around their hand, their mom, I mean, they do it so complicated. It's very simple. Look, look, you take the piece of twine, you leave about a foot in front of you, and you go one, two, and you tie. Now, you notice it stays, right? Because I did one, two, and then I tie. And then you could do one more, and you're secure. All right? So now you take your other piece of twine. Now, this guy right there, all I need to do is tie this on top of it, because if I don't tie it on top of it, it's not going to cook even this. So look. You go underneath, you put it like this, very simple. Look, look at what I do. Okay? I'm going to do it again slowly so you can really, really see it, okay? Look, you don't need to wrap it around your hand or do all that nonsense. You take it, put it right here on the cutting board. Remember what I do here, right? I go like this, and I go underneath, and then I grab it right there. The secret, my friends, is this piece of twine right there has to be straight, it cannot be here. See, this is not straight. You can't grab it right there. It has to be straight. So you keep it straight, and you go over and under. See? Over and under. A child could do this, friends. We're going to do it one more time, okay? 
<laughs> I think I'm going to run out of wine. <laughs> look, look. And uh, keep it straight. Remember, the secret, friend, is to keep it straight, right? Go over and under. Over and under. And now, look. Now, you go like this, and you're going to tie it over there. Except <laughs> mine is too short. So what do you do? <laughs> Mamma mia. I tell you. What do you do? No problem. You take a piece of twine and you give it a bandage. <laughs> and it's going to happen to you. Trust me. If it happens to me, after 50 years of doing this, you know how many thousands and millions of those I did? And it happened to me, right? So it's going to happen to you. You put a piece of twine in there so you don't have to start all over again. All right? And then, ah, screw it up. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to do the other one again, okay? Just in case. So I'll do it nice. All right? All right, now we're going to tie it. And my friends, this filet mignon right there is going to cook absolutely perfect. Okay, so I'll do another one. Better this time I take a bigger twine. <laughs> I can't believe I took a small piece of twine. That's okay. All right, so look, no silver skin. Okay, maybe a little bit left right here. Look, we might remove it just a little bit, okay? But that's not nitpick. If I do not tie this correctly, my friends, this would be a perfect roast for, for six to eight people easily. This would be perfect for two. This would be perfect for two, three maybe, uh, or, or four if you give them, <laughs> if you want to starve them. Okay. But look, let me tell you, what's going to happen here, friends? Let's clean it up a little bit better. If you don't tie this, when you cook it, it's going to be like this. It's never going to cook evenly. But I promise you, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm going to do it with you so you'll see it. When you tie this correctly, the, 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 you'll never know what a cut is. I'm going to show you. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm going to cook it. I'm going to cook it next week or whenever it is that I'm cooking it. Uh, you'll look at it. It's going to be called the, the perfect roast. And, uh, and you'll see it. All right? First thing we want to do, take enough to wine. <laughs> take enough to wine. i tell you, every mistake you can make in the kitchen, I made them. You would think I make them only once. Well, no, not me. I make them three or four times. All right, so <laughs> I better have enough this time. Uh, you know what? I may not have enough. I'm not taking a chance of doing it again. I showed you enough how to put a bandage. So I am not going to mess it up again. I hope this is longer. Okay, so look. You take the piece of twine, a small one in the front, like about a foot, okay? About a foot, right? Remember what you do, right? It's a good thing I do it twice. <laughs> so look. One, two. Why do you do two? Because when you go like this... It stays. One, two. Okay, so far, easy, right? None of that wrap it around your hand and move the thing. Don't do nothing. Don't even touch the meat. You don't even have to touch the meat, okay? Now, look, guys. Very simple, okay? We go remember what we do, right? We go underneath, but we put, we put our fingers in here, so this is tight right there, right? We tight, and we go, boom, right underneath. You don't have to pick it up, right? So now, remember what I said, right? This piece right there has to be straight, right? So we go in, and... Over and under, over and under. It's pretty easy, right? Over and under, and pull it very tight. Very tight, friend. It has to be remembered, so it has to be very tight. Otherwise, it's going to be an air pocket, and it's not going to cook evenly. You're going to be amazed when I cut it. It looks like one piece of meat. All right, remember now. Whoop. Right there. Pull it really, really tight, and go over and under. Over and under. It's not difficult, see? Over and under, folks. All right, let's do it again. Pull it. So make sure it's really, really tight now. Over and under. And one more time. Because if I do it one more time, I'm not going to have enough twine again. Ay, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Perfect. This is perfect. Over and under. See? Over and under. Right there, my friends. Right there, right? Simple, right? Now, flip it over. Tug the tail in just a little bit. Tug it in. Right there. And now look. One. Two. Now at this point, call your better half and tell him to put a finger on it or do this. And voila. Okay? So, friends, this is it. This is all there is to it. We got ourselves a beautiful roast for eight people. We got another one for two and another one for two. So, this is it for today, my friends. Stay tuned. Uh, in the next few days, we're going to publish a video where I'm going to cook this beautiful filibidion, uh, this tenderloin, this uh, roast, or however you want to call it. 
and uh, and I'm going to show you how to make it perfect. We're going to season it ahead, and we're going to do it ahead. So stay tuned. We'll see you. I hope you enjoy the video. Remember, gives us a thumbs up. Don't forget to ring the bell, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next videos.